Goody will drive. Left hand and flush over the top of Kipnick and the foul. 15 to shoot. Pull back, step back three. Bottom! Trey Woodbury! Humphrey, Humphrey to the goal to win it for the Mavericks. It's short. Tip back in. Weaver got it. Yes! Jones for the tie. Oh, oh he's fouled! And one! Are you kidding me? It's knocked away. Still loose. Doherty the heave. Oh, oh my god! Oh, it's good! There's no possible deflections for Southern Utah. Oh, no. Harrison with another three. Southern Utah is going to do something they've never done before. Go to the NCAA tournament. Happy Monday, everybody. It is July 24th, Pioneer Day here in Utah. Uh, and with it is the start of our preview weeks for teams. We're going to go for the next 11 weeks. Maybe we'll take the week off of Labor Day. But with that being said, we decided to change it up. Last year, we did it by team uh, each week in alphabetical order. This year, we're going to do it by where teams finished in the regular season standing. So as you know, the Southern Utah women finished as the WAC regular season champion. I think they came out of nowhere to win the regular season title. My co-host, Spencer McLaughlin, and our special guest here may tell you a little bit differently in just a minute, but um, Southern Utah women rolled to the regular season championship and the conference tournament championship. Big time stuff from Tracy Sanders crew. And then we'll have Utah Valley this week, the men's, uh, Utah Valley men's basketball team as well as they won the regular season title on the men's side. So with that being said, as you can see, my co-host Spencer McLaughlin, he is, I don't want to say the voice because the voice in titles radio broadcast, he's the broadcaster on ESPN plus for Southern Utah men's women's basketball. And, uh, we did a little bit on your radio show, other stuff. We talk all the time and I'm glad that I finally got you on the straight out of whack podcast. Yeah. We've been trying for way, way too long and trying way too hard to, to make this happen. But I try to be everywhere and everywhere that anywhere and everywhere that, that I can be. And where else would I want to be today than straight out of the whack? Yeah. I'm excited about this. And, and, you know, we get to talk Southern Utah hoops. We'll be talking Southern Utah men in three weeks. I want to say, um, again, you know, with the new faces there, but with that being said, let's bring in our third guest on the show today. Uh, Tamika Whitman is kind of, I, I don't know. Welcome to the show. I, I I'm excited to have you here because we got a lot to talk about with this Southern Utah squad. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so regular season champs, tournament champs go to the NCAA tournament for the first time program history. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure you guys might have had those as goals. Did you think they were realistic when you started last season? Um, honestly, yeah, it's it's definitely been our goal. Like as soon as we got together with our team for the first time, we knew that that was a really big goal of ours. Obviously, we're new we were new to the WAC, didn't know anything about any of the teams really. So I think it was just like, you know, we knew we had to go out there every single day and just be work hard, work as hard as we can and be the best group of teammates that we could be. So I think it was definitely achievable, and we did it, but it was definitely a goal from the beginning as well. What was it like? You you were at Idaho State before Southern Utah. You played against Southern Utah. So what was that like <laughs> going from a school that you played against to being on the roster at the school that you played against? Um, It was definitely a big change, you know, <laughs> huge change. But uh, I love Coach Tracy Sanders. She's amazing. The coaching staff is amazing. Uh, as soon as I met with the group of girls for the first time, I just knew that they were just some, they were great people off the court. So I knew they were going to be even better people on the court. So I want to ask you too, you're a grad student. You had the chance to go probably wherever you wanted, you know, to play immediately. Like what went into the decision to come back to Cedar city and finish out, you know, your collegiate basketball career as a Thunderbird? Um, last year just really made an impact on me. Uh, you know, the support we got from the fans in the city of Cedar City, um, just our season, you know, we were predicted to be what, like eighth in the WAC and coming out on top, you know, it just shows how determined and how much fight our team has. And like, I do believe we have some of the best coaches ever because they believe in us wholeheartedly. And so I just, I knew that I, it was bigger than me coming back for this last year. Like I want to be there for the group, this group of girls and Tracy definitely like I would play for her for a hundred more years if I could. Tamika, I, I, I have a question for you. So yes. people like Kyle and myself enjoy giving 
ourselves an outsized perception of our importance in the world to the teams and to the narratives that, that frame these conferences and whatnot. Last year, I think you guys were sixth in one poll, seventh in another. Was that up on the billboard every day as you guys were on, what was it, the nine game winning streak to be in yeah. conference play? Like was was coach just putting that up there and saying, by the way, this this is what this is what people think of you right here. I didn't vote, by the way. <laughs> I didn't I didn't get a vote. They didn't ask me. <laughs> uh, it was definitely a lot of motivation for our team. You know, we knew how like special of a group we were. So seeing that we were predicted to be so low, even though when they were in the big sky, they were pretty high up there, you know. Um, I, yeah, it was definitely a lot of motivation. We we knew that, like I said, we had to come out fighting from the very first game just to prove ourselves. And yeah, every single game after that, we we knew that we weren't seventh. Like we knew that we that's not how low we were going to go. I'm just looking up what we had last year because I didn't do the women's one on Wack Hoops Digest. So I'm just come on, Kyle, step up the <laughs> content game. Man. I do the men. I didn't do the women's preseason poll, oh, so I can't sorry, find it right now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> but I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like I think we all had outside of Southern Utah and Cedar City because we didn't know much about the T-Birds and we knew what some teams had coming back in the WAC. Um, I think. A lot of us didn't see Southern Utah coming and making the statement that you did. And then, you know, if we're being honest, the non-conference was difficult. And when it's kind of like 500 basketball, you just don't know what you're going to get. I mean, in a, in a conference that has Stephen F. Austin, who's been really, really good. Um, UTA just went to the NCAA tournament the year before. California Baptist has had recent six. I mean, there was – so I, I think there was a lot of question marks – because obviously we didn't know Southern Utah very well, right? Like that, that's what happens when you're in a different conference. Um, but I mean, gosh, you guys had Lizzie Williamson, who's a giant. I don't even think she had to jump when she'd go up for a rebound because she was <laughs> so much taller than everybody else. You got Megan Jensen. Like you and Megan Jensen both transferred in, right? Yeah. To, from she transferred in from Utah Valley. So, like, what was it like meshing with? the girls you know when you first got on campus and and so forth because i mean some new faces but some experience that tracy had coming back yeah um it was definitely like very competitive every single day um you know we had some really great returners you know we had lizzie we had sharita we had dayla we had sam and so i just knew every single day it was going to be really competitive because i know that they didn't want to lose and so adding in i think like adding megan me you know, a couple of the other new people into the group. I think we meshed really well, honestly. Um, we got into practice. It was just, it kind of just felt right, you know, like from the very first time we ran a play until we were on the court, it just kind of felt like everything we did, like it took longer some games to get us going, but I felt like everything we did, like we really just meshed really well together. Had We all had the same end goal, same purpose with playing basketball. So, yeah. You didn't you didn't have the same bench entirely from the year prior and you know there were games where you would start there were games where sam johnston would start that kind of went back and forth as as the year went on and as you were working your way back from injury as well but going into last year what was the message from the coaching staff about who about who would be the the, the starting five versus who would be coming off the bench when you had you know, Sharita and, and Dela is your two starting guards and Sam had started a good amount. And then you had Megan and Lizzie in, in the front court. What was that dynamic like going into last year? And then how did it play out compared to those expectations? Um, I think I, I don't know, like, why we started. You know, I just think Tracy played around a lot with um, different people in practice, see who um, see who worked well together. You know, that's why we played the people that we did throughout the year. Um, obviously I got hurt. I was hurt before the first game and just tried to play through that. So I think Sam stepped up big time, um, and was a significant role for us and our success in that first half of the season. And then, um, once I was back and healthy, I think Tracy just wanted to see like, if that was going to make any difference, you know, just playing around. We already know who, who, like who was going to play, who's been helping us the most throughout the entire year. So, I think she knew that like we had a solid group of people, like no matter who she put in with who at certain times, she knew that she was going to get results. And so um, I think that's one thing we're really fortunate about is that it didn't matter really. Like we had a group of people that she could inter intermingle with starting. And I think that once we found like what worked for us, she just tried to 
keep keep messing with that keep keep it going to see hopefully it didn't affect our success when you got back healthy finally or kyle i'll let you rehost your podcast here in just a moment Tamika and i are having a good time <laughs> so when you finally got back fully fully healthy did you prefer starting or coming off the bench or did it not matter like how did how did you kind of approach you know those given days mentally and sometimes not knowing whether or not you'd start for me, I literally did not care whether I came off the bench or whether I started because like at the end of the day, if whoever's in the game, if they're doing good, like I'm a team player, like I want whoever's doing good to be in the game at that moment. Uh, when I, after I was coming back from being injured, I did want to come off the bench. That was like one thing I really did. I wanted to see how the game was going. Um, if it was a really fast paced game, you know, I was limited on my minutes when I started coming back. So I would kind of pick and choose when I would want to go in the game sometimes. Um, but I definitely preferred coming off the bench. You know, I think they were having a lot of success having, you know, Sam, Dela, Sharita, Lizzie, and Megan as starters. And I didn't want to be that person to come back and interrupt that flow because I felt like I needed to start. Like, at the end of the day, like, I am the biggest supporter of my team and its success, and I would do anything I could, whether that means play five minutes or play 40 to help them out. So coming off the bench, I definitely I liked that because I got to see how the flow of the game was going from the start. But, yeah, it, didn't, it did not bother me whether I was going to start or come off the bench at all. Okay, Kyle, you can go ahead now. No, I was <laughs> gonna say I like that. Like you don't you don't hear that a lot. Like some players, yeah, sure, but like the fact that you're like, I wanna I wanted to come off the bench, I wanted to see how the game flows. You understand you had a minutes restriction, so like you had to see how it was playing out. And so I, I like that. Like the, you don't hear that a lot these days because everybody wants all that playing time rather than doing what's best for the team. And I, I think that that plays a huge part in a team success, right? I mean, just knowing maybe your role per se and knowing how it can benefit or how it can hurt. I think that's a huge thing. How did, has that been developed over time or like, was that something you talked to Tracy about? It, it just, I'm curious the mindset there. Um, That's definitely something like, obviously coming like my freshman year of college is completely different. I wanted to be that player that just came in and played a whole bunch of minutes, but you know, like, uh, I have to give a lot of credit to Coach Sobolewski at Idaho State for that. Like, he, that's one thing he really, like, developed. Like, you know, know your role. Like, at the end of the day, it's a team sport. It's not, like, an individual sport. And when I came here and I started playing for Tracy, that's one thing I noticed, she, the exact same thing. Like, it's a team sport at the end of the day. Like, know your role. Like, every single day, come in and do what you can, whether you're playing or you're not playing. Like, come in and just be the best teammate that you can be. And uh, I think, yeah, that's one thing I have to give to Coach Tracy, like, like every single day, like she made practice or whether I was playing or wasn't playing, like so much fun that like I wanted to be there and just be so supportive that me playing or not playing, like I just knew it was so much bigger than me. I'm like, like it's it's a team sport. Like I want to be there for my team. I want them to know that I support them and that I have 100% trust in them whether I'm playing or not playing. And I want that to be reciprocated. So I have to do my part to make sure that they trust me. But I also want them to know that I trust them 100%. Okay, I got two off the wall questions here. Okay. First one is, have you ever played for a coach that you have to look up to? <laughs> and then the second question is... Yes, every coach in my life. Why do you ask? Well, I know it's true. <laughs> asking her. Uh, and then the second question is, you could do this in a two-answer question, two-answer part or whatever. Okay. How hard is Tracy Sanders on Sam Johnston compared to everybody else on the team? <laughs> okay, to answer your first question about looking up to coaches, yes, I have had to look up to a couple of coaches, uh, especially Coach Tracy, because she's a lot taller than me. <laughs> and secondly, um, I don't feel like, honestly, like you come to our practices, watch our games, anything. I don't feel like Coach Tracy is any harder on Sam than she is everybody else. I feel like she treats her like a player at the end of the day, you know. If she's messing up, she's going to get mad at her for messing up. If she does something good, she's going to praise her for doing something good. I don't feel like she gets treated better or worse, per se. I just feel like Coach Tracy is just a very, very solid coach. I feel like she's been doing it for a while. She knows what she's doing, and she has expectations, and it doesn't matter who you are. Like, she's going to hold you to what she knows you're capable of doing. I just had to – I my dad coached me all my life, so <laughs> it's harder on me. So I just wanted to, like – here's the sad part. I'm going to be honest with everybody on this podcast episode. I didn't know that they were mother daughter until like after the season <laughs> was over. I don't know why. I don't know why I didn't know that, Spencer. 
Oh wow! Where, where have you? Where have you? Where have you been? Like I, I seriously, I didn't know. Did I, you never? Did you never watch any of the broadcasts with that great announcer that they have there in Cedar City yeah. and see Sam bypass just walk by the coach and think, "Wow, they look, they look kind of, they look kind of similar." All never right, Sam, Tracy Sanders is like six nine and Sam's like five nine, so it's hard. No, that's not. A, neither one of those heights are accurate. Neither, okay, it's neither close. One of them. Sam is listed at six one, and I've stood next to Sam, and I think Tamika can attest. She's about she's every inch of six foot one. Okay, all right. Yeah. I, no, I'm just gonna admit it. I, I will be. Now, on. Co- coach does wear coach does wear heels on game day, so I think uh, that's, that's. I was what, gonna say with her heels, she's definitely a lot taller. <laughs> yeah. But do I you ever know, like? Do you ever get scared on the sidelines watching her walk back and forth and worry that she's maybe gonna twist an angle? Do you do you feel like she's got it down pretty well? I, when she gets mad, I get really worried that she might twist it because she's stomping in the heels, and I just worry that one wrong step and she's on the ground. Oh, I love it! I love it. All right, let's get to the big question that I've that I've had. Um, it's one of the most played videos on my Instagram feed on the Wacoops Dietist Instagram feed. Uh, it went completely viral when it happened. Um, I don't even. I think there was. It was like one point five seconds left, or something like that, somewhere in there. The WAC quarterfinals. I think it was like three. E three. Okay, yeah, because she did drop she the pass, the kind of bobbled it. So uh, three seconds left. New Mexico State was leading by one, I believe, at the time. Two. If I remember right, two. two. Okay, so two. Trita Daughtry comes around the corner, gets an inbound pass, kind of fumbles it, and as she's falling to the ground, she said she just threw it up and hoped. That's what she told me in the post game. Yeah. You're standing, I believe, in the key or at the top of the key right there, and you see this shot go down to send you guys to the WAC semifinals. <clears throat> I think you went and jumped on Sharita. After that shot went down, take us through your thought. Like, what did you think of when she first got the inbounds pass and kind of bobbled it? And then you see her falling down. Did you know it was going in when she when it left her hand? Honestly, like I like I'm still in shock thinking about it. Like I was if you watch it, you'll see me standing. I'm her fourth defender right in front of her because I brought my defender and me right in front of her as she was shooting it. But as soon as it left her hand. Like, I swear it was slow motion. I was, like, watching the ball go through it, and I just, like, I stopped. I was like, there's no way we just won this game. And so, yeah, like, <laughs> she didn't even want to, like, she didn't even want the play run for her. Like, didn't ha- didn't think she would make a shot. We were supposed to be going for a layup, um, and she hit that crazy shot. So, oh, I was beyond excited. Like, I knew I didn't want her senior, like, her last year to end like that. And so, yeah, I, I ran and jumped straight on her. <laughs> I was so excited because her hitting that shot, like, I know it meant a lot to her, too, and especially for her to go on and win the whole thing. Like, oh, my gosh. I was just in shock. Like, if you notice my face, I'm like, the whole time. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, it was a crazy shot. But I'm, I I kind of, like, as soon as it left her hand, I was, like, watching the trajectory of the ball. And I'm like, that's in. Like, there's no way that's going in the basket. Like, and it went in. Yeah, I, I think when I was recording it, I – I was just as shocked that it went in. Like, I thought there was no yeah. chance. Like, it's not even going to get close. And then all of a sudden it hits nothing. It hit nothing but net either. Like, yeah. Like, I, I don't know. I, I and it's, one of, the, can, it's I, one of the video clips in the intro to the podcast. I'm just going to say. <laughs> I, Kyle, I think you could give her that shot with those defenders in that setting a hundred times more. She might make it another time or two. She would not hit all net another another time. Ever, or two. There's, yeah. Because when you're when you're chucking a basketball like that, like it's it's not like it was a one handed push shot where it's like resembling her shooting form. It was a it was a chuck, and yeah. you have to hit the trajectory so precisely with <laughs> that sort of motion to not hit the cylinder at all was was absolutely crazy i was just watching it while you were talking about it and tamika i don't know if you've ever like broken down what you were doing but you were your eyes are just like deadlocked on the ball, <laughs> and i can see you following it in slow motion and you have this like your arms are raising up in anticipation like oh my god oh my god i think it's good i think it's good i think it's good and then it goes in and then the chaos and then the chaos ensues it's rather it's ra- it's rather awesome to, to yeah. be frank it's pretty great <laughs> 
yeah uh, I, don't, I don't know i want to see maybe no nope, i don't have my thing plugged in i would probably see if i had it but i don't uh, it was 3.4 seconds by the way 3.4 seconds that's how that's how much time and tamika yeah. is also definitely the the third <laughs> defender on on the, on the play oh crazy crazy and then you guys go on to blow out gcu the next night and you go on and beat up cbu you really led from start to finish in that cbu game in the championship i mean does a does a breath of fresh air come in after a game like that New Mexico State game where you're like, okay, we got one where maybe we didn't play particularly great, um, and we got battle tested. Now let's just go do our thing the next couple nights. Yeah, definitely. Like after that game, I think we all like nobody talked. Like we got in the locker room, we were really excited for Sharita, you know, and then once it all kind of settled down a little bit, we just sat there and we're like, this can never happen again. Like. We're never going to put ourselves in a position to let one shot define a game for us, you know? So we kind of sat there and we're like, all right, let's take it one game at a time. Like, let's scout really good for this next game. And this is not going to happen. Like, we're going to come out and play hard from start to finish these next two, this next game. And then we happen to make it two games. So, yeah. Let's let's talk a little bit about, and Spencer, you chime in here. Let's talk a little bit about this upcoming season. You guys are going to Australia here, what, a couple weeks, two weeks? Yeah, we leave on August 5th. Yeah, so talk about the importance there. I mean, Lizzie has gone to New- North Carolina State. Sharita's, you know, done with her college eligibility. Just the importance of bringing in new faces, but also continuing that chemistry that you have from last year because you got a lot coming back to um, four starters, I believe. You're most like maybe I don't know unless you you and Tracy talked about it you'll either be a starter or come off the bench whatever but <laughs> like there's a lot of leadership here for this championship team and I think now that we saw what happened last year I think a lot of people are hyped I know I'm hyped about the SUU women's basketball team I think I've had them in my top three you know so far in this preseason so you better after voting on what you put tenth <laughs> last year. I, I had him like seventh or eighth. I wasn't mm. sure. I just I haven't watched Southern Utah women's basketball. I'm sorry. It's okay. You're Anyways, but <laughs> of course of going on that trip to Australia and then kind of what you're looking forward to as you get into this, you know, new 2023-24 season. Yeah. Um, so we do have a lot of new faces that came in um, and we've been practicing, you know, and I think so far they're like a really great fit for our team, you know, with what Coach Tracy is trying, like our what our program, what she's trying to embody with our program. I think these people are great fit, you know. Um, we'll see what happens with starters and everything. Obviously, we don't know any of that yet. Um, but yeah, we leave for Australia. That I just kind of like, those are, those would be really great opportunities for us, you know, play some really great teams, some really amazing girls, um, and then come back. And obviously, that's a great time for us to work on what we need to before season starts. So, yeah, I feel like we picked up some amazing players um, that will suit our program really well. And I'm really excited for this next year just to see, um, if like, how things are different. You know, we lost a couple teams in the WAC, so we're not going to have to play them. But um, just seeing, like, a whole bunch of players were in and out of the WAC, switching teams from one team to another. Um, so I'm just really excited just to see how we do and we compete this year against them because, you know, we did lose a lot of talent um, on our team this last year. And it really sucks that Schrader doesn't have a tenth year to come back and play. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think I think we're I think we have a really solid team, and I'm really excited to see how this goes for us. Are you going to hire a tour guide in Australia, or are you just going to let Emmy lead the way? <laughs> we have a whole itinerary planned for us. <laughs> okay. We Has well, it, we have. Did Emmy sign off? Like, did she go through it and be like, "You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. This is really <laughs> fun, but we got to make sure we go here." Like, how involved was she in that process, at, at, if at all? Well, we're not going to Canberra, which is where she's from. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So we're going to Melbourne and Sydney. So I don't think anybody's from those areas. So we've been really relying on Coach Jay to <laughs> <laughs> figure out all the good stuff to do for us. So nice, yeah, nice. Uh, have you ever you, have you ever been to Australia? Um, I don't. Yeah, have you ever been to Australia? No, I haven't. Nice. I know. I'm really excited. I'm really excited. I think it'll be a great opportunity for us. And it'll be a lot of fun. Have you been to other international countries before? Um, We played in Cancun. I played in Cancun two years ago for like a Thanksgiving challenge. Nice. So, and I've been to Canada, but I'm from Washington. So it makes sense. I just drive right up there. (laughs) Nice. Nice. 
Well, Tamika, we appreciate the time. Uh, I, I do want to ask one last question. Uh, Tracy mentioned it before. Um, is there a is there a an angry bone in Megan Jensen's body, or like does she <laughs> ever? I was told that she never gets angry, like ever. Like she's the nicest person in the world, and that no, was by your head coach. I'm not gonna lie. Tim Duncan out there just made a three, yeah. straight face. She just got stormtrooper face just all the time. You never yeah, know. No, if she was yeah. at least in my view. I'll let Tamika answer, of course. But like from what I've seen, what I watch, she hits a three, no expression, blocks a shot, nothing. I yeah. think the only time she's ever like expressed emotion <laughs> on the court that I've seen is when Sharita hit the shot. Other than that. <laughs> She's just like stone cold killer out there. Oh, she, yeah. Like she gets happy and she'll smile and stuff, but she has no mean bone in her body. Like she could go zero for a hundred on shots that day. And she's like, oh, shoot. Well, I'll make the next one. Like, it's just so positive. Anybody else, like I'm throwing the ball across the room, just getting so mad. And I mean, she's extremely competitive like the rest of us, but uh, she's just, super nice about all of it she could block somebody's shot and they could fall and she's helping them right back up to make sure that they're okay right afterwards so yeah i love megan she's she's a real sweetheart to have on so the court. she's so she's the ted lasso of the team yeah okay i like that. <laughs> i'm jotting that i'm jotting that down on my on my notes on my notes for this season <laughs> megan ted lasso jensen well, yeah well, she'll like well, that well i just wanted to confirm that so tamika yeah. we appreciate the time Good luck in Australia. Stay mm -hmm. healthy, and uh, we'll see you in about, I want to say, four months when uh, the season starts. So big-time yes. stuff from the regular season champs. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. No problem. All right, Spence, let's talk a little bit about the Southern Utah women's basketball team. They lose their leading scorer. They lose the defense player of the year. But they return Tomika, as we just had. They return Delani Bellina, Megan Jensen, Dela. Sam Johnson. She goes by Dela. Dela Bellina, sorry, excuse me. Sam Johnston, Megan Jensen, obviously. I mean, just they return everybody, right? A, a, a good piece of their core. What are you expecting from the T Birds, the defending champs in 2023 24? I think even when you lose players of that caliber, you expect them to be able to contend for one of the top seeds. You know, they were the regular season champs last year and the number two seed in the conference tournament, which makes sense to everybody, of course. But I, I think that when you look at the core of players that they are bringing back, yes, they have suffered a couple notable losses. This is un undeniable. No one is trying to dance around that fact when talking about them as, you know, a contender in, in the league or anything. But I, I think that what what you have to look at is the talent that is there and whether or not certain players can take a step. So De La Bolina, for instance, has increased her points per game average in each of her first three seasons at Southern Utah. It was two, then it was, I think, four, and then 10, or she was around 10 or 11 this year. Can that make another jump? Can she go forward another level there? We'll see. She's capable of it. I've seen her go off for you know, 20, 25 points in a game, and that's when she was playing with Sharita Doherty, who, of course, for good reason, took a lot of shots and scored a lot. So now there's kind of a void there. And I think when you look at the well-rounded nature of Bolina's game, I mean, look at what she did from beyond the arc last year, Kyle. She was a sharpshooter. Like, she is a mid-range assassin, but she's a sharpshooter as well. And I think you're looking at her as probably the most important piece because Sharita Doherty was the most important piece a year ago. She has moved on because she's out of eligibility, and you have to fill that void. Like losing Lizzie Williams in Defensive Player of the Year. That's that that's something that has to be addressed for sure. But there are other bigs that, you know, are ready and able to contribute, like a Megan Jensen, for instance, or Ashley Banks is a really big body, six five off the bench. If she can take a step forward, I think she brings a lot to the table, uh, especially at the defensive end. But with Sharita Doherty gone, I think it's Belina who has to step up and, and fill the void. But she's a three-level scorer, and she's a great passer. You know, sometimes she's had turnover issues. That's, I think, the area where she can improve the most. But I think when you look at what she is capable of and what is going to be asked of her potentially this year, I think she can be in, in, you know a first or second team all-conference caliber player because 
if you told me right now, you know, at the end of the year, Bolina's averaging 15 points and five assists and two steals a game, I would completely believe it. And if she continues to shoot well from beyond the arc, I'd say that she could go, you know, even higher than that. I, I think she could be 17, 18 point a game score. Absolutely. Well, yeah, she's going to have the ball in her hands a lot more with Sharita not in the lineup. So Trace Sanders is going to rely on her a lot more. Uh, there'll be more opportunity to score. We didn't even mention this yet, and and we'll get into this you know, more as the week goes on, but Tracy Sanders went and got a steal. Now, if she can stay healthy, Tracy Sanders might have gotten one of the best transfers in the WAC in Jaden Brown from Utah Valley. Yep. She was averaging 20 and 20 yeah. <laughs> before she went down with a foot injury. So the small, big question- small sample size, though, to be fair, she wasn't averaging that necessarily in, in February, but she was having a stretch there where she was putting up those those sorts of numbers like they were they were crazy, crazy stats. Let, let me look at let me look these up here because it was during whack play that she stood out to me because I saw her a couple times she had. 20 and 20 against Grand Canyon, 31 and 10 against Utah Tech, and 23 and 17 against New Mexico State. She was averaging over 20 points a game and 27, 47. I mean, it was it's ridiculous the number she put up in the three whack games that she played before getting injured. So if she stays healthy, there's your Lizzie. She may not be the defender that Lizzie Williamson was, but she's going to score and she's going to rebound. And, uh, like, this team's going to be good if they stay healthy. That's the biggest question. Stay healthy. Completely agree. And you you lose your length down low in Lizzie Williamson and that shot-blocking presence that is just kind of always there, always looming. You know, her block numbers were – she had one of the best block seasons in Southern Utah basketball history – but then her presence went beyond that, where just her being there altered shots, got in players' heads. You might not have a player who's going to instill that level of fear or that level of you know getting into to players' psyche. However, I think with, with Jaden Brown, you could be picking up at the offensive end where you might be losing something at the defensive end. And Lizzie Williamson was a 10-point-a-game scorer last year. And she developed into a really, really good mid-range shooter. But I think Jaden Brown has got, you know, more pop at that end. Like Lizzie Williamson's best scoring games oftentimes came in in, in non-conference affairs or when they were going up against a smaller lineup. I think Jaden Brown, it doesn't matter who you're playing, she can go out there and and score. And Lizzie Williamson, a really, really good player. I mean, she's at NC State for a reason. She's a whack defensive player of the year but she is not the type of player who can go out and score 20 to 30 consistently against whack opponents. And Jaden Brown in that small sample size showed that she is. And, you know, I think the encouraging thing as well on the injury front for players like Tamika or Jaden Brown, who, you know, have battled injuries in the past is this is still a deep team offensively. You have one through five. If you're starting five, let's just say for instance, it's Dela Bellina, Sam Johnston, Tamika Whitman, Megan Jensen, Jaden Brown. One through five could put up 20 points on any given night. Yep. It can absolutely happen. And I think that that helps mentally take the responsibility and, you know, kind of workload that players have off of those individuals, but can also help them avoid injuries because they're not being asked to do as much. They're not having to touch the ball, you know, at a 40% usage clip. They're having to touch it at a, you know, 15 to 20% clip. And that allows them to do more at the defensive end as well. So if that's kind of your, your closing lineup, you don't have that t- – because Jaden Brown is, what, 6'1", six, 6'2", six, kind of in, in, in that range? Yeah, somewhere I, in there. She's not, you know, the Lizzie Williamson 6'5", but still, this is going to be one of the taller, just longer teams in the WAC. I mean, Sam Johnston is 6'1", and she plays, you know, shooting guard or small forward for, for Southern Utah. There are not a lot of other teams that have that sort of length. So – I think their perimeter defense can be really, really good, and they still have capable shot blockers like Brown or you know Tamika Whitman can block a shot every now and then, or Megan Jensen can be a good shot blocker. Not Lizzie Williamson level, but I think their length, athleticism, and depth can allow them to put together a five that contends for another conference championship and a run at the NCAA tournament. 
Yeah, and it's going to be a loaded whack in 2023-24. We already know that with what UTA picked up in the offseason. Uh, GCU got better. So those are my three top teams, GCU, UTA, and Southern Utah, the defending champs. And we'll see what happens as we get started, get I'm going on. i about Stephen F. Austin without Mark Kellogg. Yeah, I 100% agree with you. 100% agree with that's you. That's a program that has been a staple in the in whatever league they've been in, whether they were in the Southland or in the WAC, they've just been there over and over and over again as long as Kellogg has been there. But when you undergo a coaching change, every, like every great team, even look at Alabama football, they are one retirement away from maybe not being a national championship program for 20 years, right? Utah football under Kyle Whittingham. If he were to retire, there's no guarantee as to what happens because a lot can a lot can change when you undergo that sort of uh, that sort of turnover at the head coaching position. Now, did they make the right hire? We'll see. We know that, you know, the program's going to have the resources, the commitment, and the, the pedigree to be able to win because they have shown that year after year. But whether or not you can do that with a new coach, it's not necessarily a doubt, but it's a question mark. And that question can't really be answered until we see what product they're able to put on the court. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's going to be a fun season. It's getting closer. We're excited. Follow Spencer on Twitter at Smalls underscore 55, the broadcaster, Southern Utah men and women's basketball. We're going to have him back on probably later this week to talk even more Southern Utah athletics, maybe Cedar City, maybe get his thoughts on what his favorite things to do around Cedar City are. Mm, so mm, we like will check that I out. I like where that's going. <laughs> we will check that out on another episode of the Straight Out podcast. Everybody, for Spencer, myself, have a great Monday and uh, enjoy your week. Thanks for listening to the Straight Out of Whack podcast. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and other podcasting platforms. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Remember to follow us on Twitter at Whack Hoops Digest and Facebook under Whack Hoops Digest for all your Whack Hoops news and information.